Hi, class. Um, I'm going to go over a couple of things because we are behind and we have to get caught up. The first thing is the way green yards react when there is resonant stabilization and organolithium. So if I had a green yard for organolithium, it would have this kind of structure. Let's say it had this. And you should know how to make these now. Green yards are always made from halides. Or if you had something like this. Like that, and there was a double bond there. The way these behave, for the most part, is um, they behave like anions. I need one more carbon here. Okay, so these behave like anions. So this is really just like this. Not exactly like that, but somewhat like that. It behaves like that, so we'll put it in quotes. This behaves like this. Okay, now that being the case, this is allylic. And being allylic, there's another resonance form that looks like this. Okay, this one, there'd be another, there'd be multiple resonance forms. Why? You can tell me why. But there'd be only one that you might consider, which would be this. Because as we said in class, you don't want to break up the benzene ring. Okay, now what would happen if in each case I added D3O plus to this? If I added D3O plus to this or H3O plus to this, this site would get deuterated. Okay, so what would happen, so chemists actually use this as a way to introduce deuterium like that. That would get deuterated, but so would this. Now again, in these reactions, we're not being super um, super concerned about kinetic versus thermodynamic control. But in this case, the deuterium would go on the end. In this case, you'd get two products. You'd get some of this with the deuterium in the original position, and you'd get some of this with the deuterium over here. Okay. Now, again, why is this important? It's important to realize that a Grignard is really, really does have a lot of anionic um, features and the electron density is really in flux. And if it's a non-aromatic case or a non-benzylic case, you're going to get both products and you should write both products. Okay. Um, you'd expect the Grignard to attack in both positions also. How many minutes? Uh, three minutes. Okay. Um, so again, if I had something like this, just so you're aware of this, Right, something like this, Li, that would be made from, that's a retro arrow. Okay, my retro arrow going in the wrong way. This would be made from this halide, or a bromide, or a chloride, or an iodide. Okay, and then if I added H3O plus to this, I would get a combination of products or the H would be here, okay, and the double bond here, and the H would be here, and the double bond there, okay? Another reaction that I want you to focus on, on your own a little bit, because we don't have a lot of time, I'm probably going to brush over it very quickly in class, is the reaction of allylic and benzylic. positions with NBS, okay? Um, NBS is n bromosuccinamide, which has this structure. Okay, at this point, I'm not going to write out a big mechanism for this, but suffice it to say that NBS is a bromine, a Br2 factory. What this means is it essentially produces bromine, okay? Um, and the bromine can be used in a free radical reaction, okay? Um, if, um, 
I have and the purpose for using NBS is to the reason you use this is to keep the concentrations of BR2 low. And I'll explain why in a second. Okay, so if you have this reagent and you have a, a structure like this, let's say you have something like that. I'll make it a little more symmetric. And you add BR2 <coughs> and light. The problem is the bromine will preferentially add in a conventional way to the double bond. Okay, it'll go, you'll get BR here and BR here. You'll get some free radical reaction, but you'll mostly get BR there, BR there. Okay, what we want to do with these is substitute allylically. Um, so, in addition to, we said radicals like to add, we, we know that HBr radical, HBr with light and peroxides, adds to double bonds, okay, goes on the double bond, but typically Br2 substitutes in a free radical situation, okay? So let's write what's going on here, all right? So instead of this, I would not use this, I would use NBS, N-bromosuccinamide. It's a bromine source, and a lot of chem chemistry is done this way. You, you devise a reagent that can do what you need to do. This is something that's going to produce small amounts of BR2, okay? Very small amounts of BR2, okay, in the presence of light, okay? And the, again, where is the reaction going to occur? The reaction is going to occur here and here because these are the reactive sites, um, because these are allylic, as you'll see in a minute. Okay, so let's write a partial mechanism for this. What time is it now? Seven minutes. Okay, let's write a partial mechanism for this. The NBS in the presence of light will split as follows and form... This radical, I just wrote it wrong, this radical plus this radical. So you've got the bromine radical. So this splits homolytically in the presence of light. When you get the bromine radical, it attacks this molecule preferentially at this site, forming... this radical. Now what's special about that radical? It is allylic, okay? So there's going to be another radical that looks like this. And you should be able to come up with those um, resonance forms. Now at this point you've also made HBr. Okay, and this is where that the bromine factory comes into play. You can almost think of it as happening at the same time. Only a little of this has split so this, what's happening is this is reacting with HBr, okay, on the side, and this is ionic. I'm, this is the part I'm not going to go over in a lot of detail. And this produces succinamid plus bromine. And this bromine is used in the second step of this reaction. So when this reacts with uh, Br2, because you have radical at two different sites, you're going to get two different products. So you will get this product plus this product. And I want you to think about that, okay, because that's kind of important. So this is called succinamide. And this is called n bromo succinamin. And it's also, people usually refer to it as NBS, okay? So the point here is you can use NBS in lieu of using BR2. What's the advantage? Very low concentrations of bromine, which means you get less on the double bond, which is if you just put, flooded it with BR2 and then used light, you get some allylic substitution but um, 
you would get mostly addition to the double bond. Now, on the other hand, if you have an aromatic, okay, you would expect with this stuff, this is good stuff. You can use it pretty much for all your ruminations now, but we would expect if we had an NBS and light, we would expect this site to brominate, the benzoic site, based on what we were doing Friday. By the way, this is all in chapter 17. You would expect to get that. Why that? Because you're doing a radical, this is a radical reaction, and you should be able to write that mechanism out, okay? Um, again, it's really just a BR2 reaction. It's a different source of BR2, okay? So I'll see you in class.